Amen and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many are really glad to be here today? Man, we are so excited that you are here today, that you come to worship the King of glory. If this is your first time here, we welcome you. I pray that you fill out a connection card, and when the uh, uh, when service is over, if you can just find the person that helped you and connected you, uh, we have a gift for you, and we just appreciate you so much. Or if this is about the 100th time you've been here, man, we love you, and we appreciate you for all uh, that you got going on in your life, and you just press through all the muck and the mire and the difficulty and the craziness of life to be here, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And man, I celebrate that today. I celebrate that. After coming through the craziness of COVID and getting all that, I don't take it for granted that we get that we come in here and just have a great time and celebrate King Jesus together. Amen. Amen. Well, we just welcome you here today. We're going to just jump right into the message. How many of you were just blessed uh, by uh, my wife? She preached last week. You can come on out with the pulpit. We got Shell, Shell's on, on active duty, active duty today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, if you see my wife take off running, we have not heard from Josiah in a minute. It's, it's been a while. We've heard just briefly from him uh, a scripted message real quick, something he read, and then he called us. He's uh, stationed in uh, Georgia, and so he called and said he was safe from the hurricane while Steph was in class, and uh, that's about the last time, we, that's the last time we've, we've heard from him, so we have not been able to talk to him. The only thing we do know is that when they went through the gas chamber, he kind of liked it, which I don't know if that was strange or not, but to me it seemed a little, it seemed a little off, but uh, if you see my wife take off running, I, I'm not that terrible of a preacher. I met, I just try to, she's like, I'm just, I'm gone, this is enough, but it's just, we're not sure what time he's going to call, so that's what we got. Hey, God is good. He just is. I mean, he's just, he's just, God is good. And I love seeing y'all smiling faces out there today. Uh, if you didn't get to hear uh, Stephanie preach last week, I encourage you, jump on the app. They have all the notes in there. There were so many things, so many nuggets so many nuggets that she dropped that you just got. We have on our app, there's the notes from it, or you can jump on YouTube and just, and just jump in there. And that's part of our Connect group. If you're not in Connect group, they have a women's Bible study. If you're new and you're looking for a Bible study, jump in. There are a few weeks in it, but we'll, they'll take you. They, we, yeah, they'll, they'll take you. It's at the Weirton campus. Uh, the men's Bible study has been great. I'm so, man, just so, I, I don't say proud, but... You always hear the men getting bashed. You just do. I mean, it's just everywhere. And, but the, the men are just straight representing uh, in the connect group. I mean, just doing, they're doing on the armor of God. And if you hadn't been able to get there, just show up. Look, look, it just take you right on in, you know. But part of our connect group, if you got a lot going on, man, just get in the app. Go, go. It's called Jimmy's Amen Corner. Get in there, and you can just see the sermon notes, and you can dive in, kind of do your own Bible study. You can get into YouTube, hear it again. Keep that word in you. Keep, right? Keep that word in you. Keep that word in you. Or we got a little Spotify channel. We're kind of hip like that. No, we're not hip like that. But we do have a Spotify on your way to school, on your way to work, on your way home, crazy day, throw on Spotify. All the songs that we do here, plus some new ones, plus some other stuff, you can jump on there and just listen and write through your car or whatever. So these are just great ways to stay connected. Great ways to stay connected. Amen? But one of, the things that, uh, one of the things that I loved about what my wife preached when she was talking about Hannah and Panaya, and she talked about that, that Paniah just had a, um, always attacked Hannah when she was going to the temple. And you know the enemy is strategic. The enemy is, is strategic. And I want to say this, and I've said it before, but I want to say it again to kind of run in with my message here today, that is soon, and maybe you're just kind of new to this, being a follower of Jesus. But as soon as you decide to say yes to God, expect opposition. 
I have a few moments and I'm going to say it again. As soon as you decide to say yes to God, expect opposition. Not only opposition, expect confusion. Expect chaos. Expect doubt. And they will bombard you. You're like, wow, this is, man, it's a pretty negative church. <laughs> 20 something years I've been doing this. What'd you say, 30? 20 something. <laughs> I've been at this for a minute. Preached, I'm at preached over everywhere. I've been in the Compton, California, on the streets of Skid Row. I've preached in the jungles of Vietnam. I preach in some yuppity, yuppity, beautiful, gorgeous cathedral churches, and I've been in the backwoods of Georgia with no AC, no nothing, with a microphone cutting out, jumping wooden pews in a single bound. We were talking about in Huddle this morning. I preached in the in the woods of in the hills of Jamaica, not on the beach, Montego Bay or anything, just way up. Way up there, man. We had we had some church. We got to praising God so much. I, I lost I, I lost my wedding ring. They had no AC, no nothing, and people just started praising the Lord. And it just I don't know. Just I went to say something, and there it went. But I say that to say this: the enemy will leave you alone when you're doing nothing. When you're, doing, when you're doing nothing, when you're expecting nothing, and you're believing for nothing, or you're pursuing nothing, the enemy will leave you alone. But the moment you decide to step up into the will of God for your life, all hell generally breaks loose. Why? Because the en enemy wants to intimidate you. He wants to discourage you. He wants to wear you down so that you give up and stop contending for your promise. Can I say that again? Because that's it's kind of a little theme right there. That, he, that you give up and stop contending for your promise. You see, what do you mean for your promise? You see, the, the Bible is just full of promises. Corinthians even goes further in it, and Paul uh, uh, writes it down. He says, for all the promises, speaking to the church of Corinth, he says, all the promises of God are yes and amen. People ask, where, you know, why do you say, hey, can I get an amen? I got it from Paul in Corinthians. Now, when you're mentioning the promises, he wanted an amen. He says, all the promises of God are yes and amen. What do you mean the promises of God? All throughout the Bible, there's promises. By his stripes. Yes. By his stripes, I'm healed. Joshua says, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I know there's a lot of craziness happening in the world right now, but the, the promise I'm standing on for me and my house, for I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor have I seen them begging bread. The promises of God. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. But you got to know his word to know his promises. And so the enemy will do everything to, to keep you from contending for your promise. So often we just say, do it, God. Do it, God. It's contending for it. The kingdom of God suffereth violence, but what, Butch? The violent take it by force. Talking about there's, there, you got to contend, you got to fight for it. Hello? So I come today just to remind you, because the enemy might have been wearing you down and the enemy has just been throwing stuff and discouraging you. I come to remind you that you are a jailhouse wrecker. You are a mountain mover. You are a giant killer. You are anointed. The Bible says in John that you're anointed. Anointed for what? Not anointed to look cute. Look at me. Look how anointed I am. 
No, you're anointing. He says there's an anointing down on the inside of you. Anointing for what? Anointing to slay the enemy. And for, some, and for some of us, it just I don't want to take your way back, but for some of us that you've been fighting, your whole, fighting the enemy your whole life, even when you weren't in church, even when you didn't get in church, and now that you're in church and your eyes have been open to the gospel, you look back and say, man, the enemy's been after me from birth. Hello? I remember I went through a, a rough season early in, in just being a follower of Jesus Christ. And I remember my mom just preaching that to me and telling me that the enemy's just been after you. I said, well, what, what, do you, what, do you, what do you mean? And my mom was telling me a story that, you know, she, she was pregnant with me. There was a lot going on in, in our family, a lot going on with marriage and you know my father and stuff at the time she felt so you know so alone and she thought man this was the this is the worst time in the world to be pregnant find out she was pregnant with me she said I, I just this is not a good time this is marriage was crumbling things were happening and stuff and so she didn't she didn't know and she just became a follower of Jesus she was slinging dope and stuff and she decides to give her heart and life to the Lord to a street preacher and she says, oh, man, this is a terrible time to, to be pregnant. And so she goes down to the doctor, and she's going she's gonna to abort me. And she runs into another uh, Christian woman that she had just met, and she didn't think nothing of it. She said, oh, what are you doing here? She said, oh, you know, I just don't have time for this baby. Where I'm going to abort. She said, oh, no, no, no. No, God's got a plan. For some of us, for some of us, the enemy's been fighting us from day one. The enemy's been fighting us from day one. And one of the ways that the enemy will use to strangle you, to choke out the promise and purpose of your life. In Acts chapter 8, we're going to dig into this just a little deeper. In Acts chapter, did you hear the kids screaming? I love that. I love that. Hey, people are like, oh, the kids, don't quiet down kids, let them shout. There are. They should be out shouting us. Come on now. But in Acts chapter 8, and I'm just going to give you a lot of references, and you can read it when you get home or write it down or just throughout the week just do it. But in Acts chapter 8, they talk about this, this man, Simon the sorcerer. And Simon the sorcerer was engaged in sorcery and magic. magic, And he just, uh, I just, I'll throw it out there. He just... He, 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 he did the works of the enemy. He conjured up spirits. That's why you got to be careful you kind of stuff you open doors to in your life. Because there's demonic forces attached to that. And that was it. And he, he, he reigned. He reigned over Samaria. Not talking about reigning over Samaria that he was, you know, some great politician and he was reigning. No, spiritually, the, the demonic forces in him reigned over Samaria. To even when he was out and about, they likened to him because the things that they would do, they would call him a great God. That was kind of his nickname. Oh, there comes the great God. Because some of the demonic forces and the things they would do. And he reigned over that region over that area everything was under not over, under Simon the sorcerer's control but what controlled him was in control the Bible calls it and you hear it principalities somebody shout principalities the Bible calls it principalities they're, they're, they're magistrates they're, they're, they're demonic magistrates who serve or reign over entire regions of councils. They'll take a whole region and tie it up. Legion, you all remember the story with Legion? Legion had uh, many devils in him, right? And, 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 and the spirits begin to talk to Jesus. They said, whatever you do, don't send us out of the region. You can send us in pigs, just don't send us out of the region. Why? Because we reign over that region. We reign over that area. That's our territory. That's our turf. Just like even now, there are territory, there are principalities that reign over this area. 
that reign over this Ohio Valley, that reign over Stoneville. I was just reading a, an article, uh, Bobby John's wife, Pam, did an article, it's so good, I, I'm thinking about preaching on it, I, I, I don't have this in my notes, but Stephanie and I, it's been our conversation back and forth, but Pam did an article, I think, for News 9, and began to do all this uh, uh, dissecting of, uh, of what's happening in Stoneville, statistics that's happening in Stoneville, and, and she find out that the national average uh, for poverty is like six point something in, in, in like national or in Ohio, but in Stoneville, it is triple. And what was it? Severe poverty is it just, no, no, not anywhere else, just in this area. That's not a coincidence. There are demonic forces that reign over areas. They're called principalities. Are you still with me? Okay, all right, just making sure. And, and, and these principalities reign over these regions. But can I go just a step deeper? Not only is the enemy after regions, he's after houses. It's not just, just Stoneville, he's after, he's after, he, he likes territory. That's why you'll hear a preacher say, I'm going in and taking back what the enemy stole from me. What? Taking back territory. Because the enemy likes to reign, the principalities like to reign over territory, over, over homes. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about he's after your address. I'm talking about he's after your marriage. If I could put it in the, in the King James Version, he's after your loins. That was birth. If I, can, if I can put it in today's vernacular, uh, he's after your crumb snatchers. He's after your lineage. The principality, he says, hey, here's, what, here's what I'm going to do. If I can't, if I can't get a, if I can't tire them out to where they're not, they're still coming to church. And, and I can't get them upset because of uh, 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 somebody at their workplace giving them a, a crooked eye. And I, and I can't get them to go. I'm just going to go after their marriage. Every, every marriage I do. And the two shall become one. Family and friends, will you please stand today as we get ready to celebrate this amazing couple that has decided to become one. And the family's out there and they all look wonderful and stuff and my favorite part of the whole thing. And so now by the authority invested in me as a minister of the gospel and by the state of Ohio, I now want to introduce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Brad Johnson. And everybody's like, ah. The two have become one. But the enemy says a house divided against itself can't stand. So the enemy comes and brings division. He says, listen, I, I, they're still coming to church. They're still bringing their kids to youth. They're still taking here. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in and I'm just going to divide the house. Because if I can divide the house, if I can divide and start with the marriage, if I can get after the husband, if I can get there, then it's going to trickle on down. And then the kids are going to be grumpy. The, the husband's grumpy. Now the kids are grumpy. And then the kids are grumpy. The dog becomes grumpy. And now the dog's grumpy. The cat's grumpy because the dog's grumpy. And now the cat's all oh, I'm hot mess. And the car just somehow knows everybody's grumpy. And now it don't want to start. And then the weather finds out you're all grumpy. And everybody's grumpy. And now you're just grumpy. He's just mad at everything. You spit in the fishbowl, you kick the cat, you threw the dog out, hope he got hit by a car. He's just mad. When the enemy... And I'm, I'm gonna, I don't have time to, to jump into this word, but just, just walk with me. When the, when the enemy sends a curse, what I mean by this curse, when, when the enemy is, is, is speaking negative over your life. Let me jump in it for a second because I see some like, oh. When Balaam and Balak 
right? Are you all familiar with it? Read it when you get home. Balaam and Balak, who are coming in, and, and he says, I want you to curse them. I want you to curse them. I want you to curse them. I, I want you to destroy them. I, I want you to make their lives miserable. I want you, he's using the curse. I, I, I want you to, that they don't know who they are, that they, not who they represent. And, and he says, listen, you can't curse what God has blessed. So that's what I mean. That's just a, that's just a little paraphrase real quick because we got to move on. But, but what, when, the, when, the, when the enemy sends a curse, he either, either sends it to a city or he sends it to a house to divide the house, to discourage the house. Can we go one step further? Jacob had two sons, Simeon and Levi. And they has a daughter, Dinah. Giving you a lot of reference, you read it when you get home. Simeon and Levi are little, man, they, 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 ooh. you don't want to bring them home for dinner. They wow. But their sister, Dinah, which is Jacob's daughter, and I think it's in Genesis 34, a man named Shechem. Shechem, Dinah, Dinah is good and appealing to the eyes, and Shechem sees that, whoa, what's up? And the Bible just says it real, real quick, but man, there's just so much that could be preached from it, but it just says that Shechem raped Dinah. Jacob, her father, gets wind of it, and so Jacob's kind of like almost taken back. This is where things kind of get interesting. Simeon and Levi catch word of it, and boy, you better watch out. Now, you can understand they're upset, but Jacob is kind of like, hey, let's, let's, let, hold on for a second. S Simeon and Levi are just ready to wreck things. They're already a little edgy. And so the anger has aroused. They, 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 they are ready. And so what they did is they concocted a plan. They didn't tell anybody. They concocted a plan, not just to go after Shechem. They said, we're taking everybody out. And so they, they concocted a plan to trick the men, and then they have killing all the men in the village. And Jacob is like, like taken back. Jacob is so angry with them that even time goes on. And Jacob is so angry for what they did. He is so mad at what they did that if you read further in Genesis 45, Jacob is getting ready to die. He's ending towards the end of his life. And he's pronouncing blessings and he's speaking to his kid. And rather than letting things go, when Simeon and Levi come, he says, I curse you. And they're like, oh, whoa. Like, I thought I was getting the house and the car and I thought I was getting the flat screen. What's going on? He said, I curse you for what you did. They're like, you're still, you're still, you're still in that? You're still, Dad, you're still mad about that? Hmm. When Jacob heard it, he was angry with them. He was angry with his sons because they were con artists and tricksters. They had tricked the whole village. They had connived and manipulated. And when I was reading this and I was studying this, he was so angry that his with his sons because their deceiving plan that he curses them. The more I read this, the more I read just this whole passage in here, was Jacob really angry with his sons or was he angry that he seen himself? Can we dig a little deeper? So we are out and about. And Noah, Noah did something. My Noah. He did something. Nothing terrible. Nothing, just, just a little something sly, you know. Nothing, nothing terrible. Everybody's like, oh, I'm going home. Preacher kid. 
He's a hot mess. And he did something, and I turned to Stephanie, and she's laughing. Like I said, it wasn't anything terrible. She's laughing, and I'm straight-faced. And she said something, and she turned. She's like, that is so something you would do. <laughs> Did I not give you the look? Yeah. And, 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 and now I'm understanding Jacob. Because his anger is not what they've done. His anger was he sees himself. He sees his mother. He sees his uncle in himself, and he's thinking that he's more angry at himself than he is Simeon and Levi. You said, What do you mean? Can I go a little deeper? In Genesis 27, Jacob and his mom, Rebecca, connive a plan to deceive Isaac, which is his father, her husband, to get the blessing. She says, listen, here, and they concocted a whole plan. Jacob, now you do this, and you go here, and then when Isaac comes in, and he can't see real well, we're going to get it, we're going to get the blessing. He's not only there, he tricked Esau. They connive it to get the birthright from Esau. They're all tricksters, they're all con artists. Mama's involved. The kids are involved. They, had, they even have an uncle, a great uncle. It's Laban. Laban was known. You look up his name, you Google, and the first thing that comes up is trickster con artist. Jacob, who had cursed them, This is tough. He cursed them for being like him. Have you ever seen the worst part of yourselves in your kids? Sometimes quiet is like bad, but sometimes quiet is good. I'm praying that's a good quiet. Jacob, who have cursed him, cursed him for being like him, for being like his grandmother, Rebecca, who was slick and conniving, like his great-great uncle, Laban, who we talked about, who was a trickster and a con artist. This stuff that had run through the family, now the old man is fighting the boys for being like the family. King David, the same way. King David running and shacking up and fooling around with Bathsheba and his kids are shacked up and running and doing and messing and all overcome with all kind of mess. I mean, they're all... But thanks be to God. But thanks be to God. But thanks be to God that it only takes one person. To break something that has run through a generation. It only takes one person. I'm reminded of, when we go back, I'm reminded of Joseph. Joseph, everything he'd been through, everything that he faced, everything that he'd gone through. But Joseph was there at the end. He says, what you meant for bad, God has turned it for good and has set me ahead of you to be. A it only takes one person, just like Ezekiel going down to a valley of dry bones. It only takes one person person. It only takes one person to keep coming to church. It only takes one person. I don't care if your kids don't come with you. I don't care if your spouse doesn't come with you. I don't care if your grandkids don't come with you. You keep coming to church because it only takes one person. It only takes one. 
It only takes one person. Many of you, we look over the genealogy uh, uh, with Jesus in Matthew chapter 1, and it talks about here, and it talks about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and it talks about Rahab and all the freaky-deaky stuff that she does, and, and it talks about here, and it talks about this, and then all of a sudden, then it says, then Jesus. Oh, it only takes one person, that a genealogy. It only takes one person in a lineage of mess, in a lineage of dysfunction, in a lineage of problem, in a lineage of it only takes one person to be obedient to the king of glory it only takes it only takes one person to stand up and say you can't curse what God has blessed in this I wish I had three people to jump to their feet throw their hands in the air and shout I'm that guy yeah, I'm that person. I'm that one. Your family don't know it. People are home sleeping. Your uncle's home drunk. But it just takes one. It just takes one person. One person to say no. It only takes one person. That what's just been on me. shall no longer be on them. Can we keep going a little bit step further in this? I got, I got a few, I got, ooh, I got good time. Am I preaching all right? But it just takes one. It just takes one. Of all the, the genealogy and you see all the thing, David was in that genealogy. We just talked about a mess. What do they call him? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob, the trickster, con artist, craziness, all going on. But the root of Jesse. A man shows up, born of a virgin. As John the Baptist preparing the way for the one. I love John chapter 1 it says, because he made him who knew no sin. Or no, John chapter 1 was the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we know, but there's something so profound. It's not just that Jesus showed up. But there's something so profound about his death, his burial, and resurrection. It's, 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 I know we can get caught up in some fancy stuff, but, it, but it's, it's just the one person. It's, it's the one person that can walk in what Christ has done for us. You say, what do you mean? Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Amazing scripture. And look what it says. When we talk about Jesus, he came. And it says that he canceled, watch, talking about Jesus' death, right? He canceled the record. Somebody shout canceled. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. Stick with me. Having disarmed heard somebody just say, it just hit somebody. That was, it just hit somebody. Glory to God. I mean, it, when it hits you, it'll hit you like that. Having disarmed principal, did we just not talk about that? Yeah. Having disarmed those things, he made a public spectacle triumphing them over it. Somebody shout canceled. Yeah. He canceled it. It's not just the death, the burial, and resurrection. He canceled some things. Come on, look up here. He canceled something. He canceled some stuff. He canceled something. What do you mean? Watch, watch. He can't. Watch, watch, watch. He can't. I, I know the worship team comes up and it can be like, oh. But we, our, our, huddle, our huddle anthem today was stay locked in. Stay locked in. Because I'm going to help somebody today. And I know, I know the, the victim hood in you is going to be screaming, look over here, look over here, look over here. But the victor in you has to stay locked in. Right? Somebody shout locked in. Nudge your neighbor and say, I'm locked in. 
Now look at him again and say, neighbor, I'm the one in my family, so I got to stay locked in. I got to stay locked in. I got, I got to stay. I, I, got, I got to stay locked in today because he, he's talking to me. He's talking to me. I got to, I got to stay locked in today. He canceled what? He canceled the charges. He canceled the charges. The charges. Hold on. Hold on, Jacob. The charges. Not only the charges, the, the record. What? He canceled the record of the charges. The record. Jacob does not have a good track record. King David does not have a good track record. If they were applying for a ministry job, I would not hire them. <laughs> I'm like, you trick them, you're going to trick me. But when Jesus died, he canceled. And now us as believers have to walk in that. As believers, we have to walk in that. As believers, we got to walk in that. He said, what do you mean cancel? Goes back to the beginning of the enemy doing everything he can that you don't contend with the promises in your life. And the enemy's been telling you, why you what you can't be and telling you what you can't have and telling you what you can't do and it reminds you of painful moments and memories and incidences in your life and he always tells you you will always be less than and you will always be limited but Jesus says I canceled that I, I canceled that I canceled what's it mean I canceled it means I am the head and not the tail that I am above and not beneath that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world that I am somebody that he has a plan for me that he has a purpose for me that that God has canceled the things that have been I got to learn to walk in that rather 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 Jesus canceled or cursed a fig tree. They go back and the fig tree shriveled up. It wasn't growing anymore. That's as believers, when you see stuff in your family, for me, we, we come from, and I know this is Facebook Live and I, I don't really care. But I come from a lineage Abuse, alcoholism, whoremongering, jacked up, messed up. That, that is my lineage. Amen. But when you cancel yes. some things over your life, when you begin to cancel and say, no, 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 that stops here. I'm that one person. I cancel that addiction. I cancel that mess. I cancel that alcoholism. I cancel. When you start seeing it come in like a flood, and it comes in like a flood, the Bible said when the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up us. I wish I had three people. It'll raise something up down on the inside of you. Somebody shout, I cancel it. I cancel it. Somebody shout, I cancel it. I cancel it. Right, now, right now, this day, this day it, stops. it stops. Get out of your seat, find three people, high five them, tell them I cancel it, I cancel it, I cancel it, I cancel it, I cancel it. Just give me a little something. I can't, yeah, tell them, I cancel it, I cancel it, I cancel it, I cancel it, I cancel it. Just stay with me, don't go ahead of me. I cancel it, I cancel it, I cancel it. Yeah, did you tell him I canceled it? Did you tell him I canceled it? I canceled it. It's stopping here. It's stopping here. It's stopping here. Don't get ahead of me. Are you locked in? See what I mean? What I mean by cancel, the enemy 
And when I was talking about that curse, the enemy will speak these things and he'll say, you know what? You know what? That fear will always have you. That fear will always have you. That anxiety is never going to go away. That depression is just who you are. That's just part of the family. That anger that has your family is going to have you. Jacob was angry, even to the, his death, angry. Angry at Simeon and Levi. Simeon and Levi were angry. They all were angry. That addiction, that poverty, that mess. And the enemy speaks those things and it says it's going to have you. But that's what I'm saying. You stand in what we call, this is basic biblical principle. You stand in the authority that Christ has given you. You have to stand your ground and say, no. For me and my house, we serve. It's not becoming the victim and cowering down. It's standing up in who God has called you to be. Say, no, I cancel that over my kids. I cancel. No, I, when you start seeing things that you're like, no, 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 no. Things you've seen in your grandparents, things that you've seen. No, 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 no. We're canceling that. We're canceling that. We're can. The, you don't. Here's the title of my message. I know I'm late on it, but it's here. You don't live there anymore. What did, what did we say? What did we say? What did we say? That principalities are over regions, territories, homes. That's why you're saying, I don't live there anymore. Because the enemy thinks, I got this house. I got this family. I got this lineage. No, 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 no more. I don't live there anymore. My kids ain't living there. My grandkids, I, I, don't even, I, I don't even see grandkids around anywhere, but they're not living there. Me and our marriage, no, we're not even talking divorce. We're not. I ought to get a shouter in here. I, I, it could be troublesome, but we're not. No, 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 don't even bring it up. Don't even bring it up. No, we're not walking in what everybody else in the family's walked in. We're not walking in that. We're not walking in that. We're standing on the promises of God. He says, having, having disarmed principalities. Would, he, would we talk about principalities? Things that have been in your family that have been holding you down. He says, I disarmed that. When they, they're going to sing a song here in a moment. And a portion of the song it says, when Christ went down, I got up too. Things that have been holding you down. The mindset that's been holding you back. Or the thing that has held you hostage. He says, I've disarmed those things. Amen. I disarmed that. Now walk in that. And the third thing it says, then he nailed it to the cross. Amen. Then he nailed it to the cross. Here, watch out. I think they're coming through there. If not, they should be. All right, they are. Having nailed it to the cross. Do I got, oh, I got four minutes. Let's run with this thing. Can we run with this thing? Amen. Come on, are you sure? Are they, oh, they're working so hard. Be careful. George, don't hurt yourself. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. George is tough. Shell's done double duty today. Well, we definitely couldn't have had Tina lift that. Not that you're not strong enough, but I don't know if you could have reached. Got you, boo. Got you. Yeah. The cross. He says, having nailed it to the cross. Hebrews says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, for who the joy set before him endured the cross. Luke chapter 9 says it this way, if anyone come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross. 1 Corinthians chapter 118 says this, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Isaiah says it this way, and this is just how I like how he says it. Isaiah says this, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement for our, for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. What does that mean? He took a beating so that you can go to bed. He took a beating so you wouldn't have to worry about it. He took a beating... So he could reverse the curse. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, read it when you get home. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He was cursed so you wouldn't have to be. He was killed so you wouldn't have to be. He was bruised so that you would be liberated. He was beaten so that you could break the curse. I say all that. I say all that to say this, and this is the, 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 the thing, the revelation God gave me. And it's like, son, sit on this. He carried the curse so that you don't have to. You've been carrying it and carrying it and carrying it and carrying it. But today is your day. Today is your day. What did it say? Having nailed it to the cross. You've been carrying it and, and he sent me here today. To say, tell the people of Impact Church, put it back. You've been carrying this thing and carrying this thing. And he says, I will tell the people of Impact Church, put it back. I have nailed it to the cross. On your pew right there, you're going to see a small little card. You're going to see a pen and a small little card. And it has a little thing. You don't even put your name on it. But I want you to write down on that card. You'll see it on the pew. If you don't have one, an usher will get to you on that card. On that card right there. You don't have to put your name. You don't have to put a long phrase, sentence, or anything like that. I want you to put the one thing, the one thing that has been trying to destroy you and your family. The, it could be fear, it can be anxiety, it can be depression, it can be addiction, it can be hurt, it could be memories, it could be abuse. The one thing that just seems like it's trying to choke out everything in your life. It could be perversion, it could be worry, it could be poverty, it could be sickness. This month is a month of mountain moving Sundays. That's where we're theming it, mountain moving Sundays. And we're trying to help you that that mountain that you have been trying, I, I say it this way, you're doing the time for a crime you never committed. But you're that one person here today. And what you're doing by coming here, you're going to come up here and George is going to have pens and you're going to write that thing down. John's going to play a song. And you're going to come up and you're going to write that one thing down and you're putting it here today. It stops here today. It stops here today. I said, it stops here. And don't worry, nobody's going to look on your stuff. We come to the agreement. Who, who all here is jacked up? Raise your hand. See, we're all in it together. So don't be like, oh my goodness, can you believe what they put? We all jacked up, so it's fine. All right, you ready? You start it. Who starts it? Drummer, somebody? All right. One, two, three. Come on. Write it down. Come up here. And you put it here, and you're not taking it back. Come on. Put the words up there. We almost out.
I want you out there. You're saying bye to this today. Come on. say this I'm trying to be careful this this is the start this is not the end all that you come up here and you did that and you're like okay because the Bible is very clear Amen. that when you kick something when you kick a demonic force out it's gonna come back it's, it's very clear on that. So this is not like, oh, I did that and life is going to be perfect. No, this is the beginning. This is, this is one step that now you stand it. So when he comes back, when the enemy, when the thoughts come back, when, when the discouragement comes back, when you get so overwhelmed with, with anxiety, that you fight through it with the word of God and you're like, no, I don't live there anymore. I don't live there anymore. I don't live there. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When you're so overcome by your past, this, this is the beginning that you made this step. Now you keep walking through that. Now you keep walking in that. But today, listen, don't, don't get so, don't get so, because the enemy will try to convince you to come and pick it back up. It's got to stay here today. And this is what Mountain Moving Sunday month or whatever you want to call it. We have a, a time, I'm kind of doing announcements too, but not doing announcements, that we have a night this month that we have a time of, we're going to do prayer, fasting, and a night of worship. And people, and people ask, why are you doing that? Here, Amen. here, we're helping you move that mountain in your life. We're doing a mountain moving Sunday where we're going to bring everybody together, and we're going to have just all kinds of stuff going on. What's happening? We're moving. We're, we're, we're moving we're moving things in our lives that have held us down, that have held us hostage. And we're going to be who God's called us to be. Amen? Oh, come on. Welcome, my wife. Ushers, come on down forward, if you would. Uh, prayer, prayer team. You got it. You take it. Amen. If you need prayer today, like you put something up on that cross, and you said, I, I just want someone to stand and agree with, with me that it was hard to hang that up there. Um, allow, allow us to pray with you. Give us the honor to stand in agreement with you and pray and lay hands. The Bible says to lay hands on one another and to pray with one another. So allow us to do that. We can't talk about fighting the enemy and protecting our homes. What pastor, how many of you just were blessed by that message today? How many of you were just, that's what you needed. How many of you are so grateful that Pam had someone to intervene and say, no, you cannot have that child and that we are blessed because someone that one 
made a difference. So we that message today, all of it is so good, babe. But we can't talk about that and not and not focus on the family. So we we have Catalyst Youth and Young Adults tonight. They are actually going to be going to the night of worship um, tonight. So if you would like to know what the arrangements, if they're meeting somewhere to travel together, I believe it's in Burkholz is where they're going. Both groups, the youth and young adults, please see. Um, the shoemakers before you leave today. Also, we have impact couples that will be meeting Friday, October 18th from seven to nine. Happy couples make happy churches. I don't know how to express that, but when we see marriages working, the, the, it's important. So the couples will be meeting October 18th at the Neely's house. If you need to know who the Neely's are, wave your hand in the air. And um, never forget, we, always, we don't always do communion collectively. We do communion. But some people, it's just, it's a part of you that you want to do it every week. Don't forget that it's available. It does not negate the sanctity of it. It does not negate the power of it. If you do it with the intimacy of you and God, it's just as powerful. But there is communion available to you the back. We love you guys. We bless you. We speak that over you this week. We ask that you go forth with the knowledge you picked up today and let it not just be a seed that was planted today, but something that grows deep in your life, that overpowers and principalities, that that's the kind of church we wanna be. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your hand upon each and every individual in this room, that that message went forth, Father God, and you're raising up an army that is gonna know how to fight powers and principalities and take back every territory the enemy has tried to take dominion over, for you have given us dominion by the blood that was shed on the cross in Jesus mighty name we pray everybody says amen, amen. hug somebody before you leave and we love you God bless <laughs>